everybody, and welcome to Fandom Forum. I'm your host, Joe Compton. Thank you so much for joining me, and uh, welcome to another great show. We're almost to the end of our first season, so this is real exciting. I got um, I got the opportunity to meet a band from Spain, uh, a very, very awesome metal band called Vorg, and we're going to talk a lot about them. And I turned them on to a few of my good friends here who I will bring into the conversation right now. And we're going to talk all about them and this great album that uh, they just put out. Let me let me first introduce you to Vorg for those of you who don't know who they are. Vorg was born with the firm idea of, of looking for a sound of its own where, where the thrash metal of all life is mixed in with epic, classic metal and aggressiveness of the Nordic extreme metal. At the end of 2013, they released their first LP, Back From The Shadows. All right. So basically, they're a band from Spain. They're a metal band. Like they said, they're they're a combination of thrash, extreme metal, with the Nordic twist to it. And this is their third LP, which we'll be talking about today, entitled Dark Tales. It is... Uh, we'll, we'll get into what it's all about and who it is. But first, I want to let everybody here introduce themselves. All right. I'm Ed Souter. I'm the chief flunky, as you can see down there somewhere, um, at Burning World Press. Um, I'm actually the vice president in charge of operations. And I am um, um, a heavy metal, rock and roll type person. I like to listen to a lot of different things, but mainly hard rock, heavy metal. I am Joseph Moore. I am uh, the resident thrash metal drummer. Uh, I love uh, all things metal. I've been involved in, in metal for many, many, many moons since I was like nine or 10 years old. Um, I had a chance to, to tour with Blood Feast. Um, I'm in DTA and a bunch of other wonderful projects that I'm very happy with, and I am very happy to be here. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I am an author and a podcaster. I love metal. Uh, bands I listen to go range everywhere from Amon Amarth to Nightwish and lots of things in between. And I... Like I said, I really dug this album. It was very fun. It reminded me of some of the bands I listened to. So we'll talk about that in greater detail. Born and uh, raised in California, currently living in Iowa. Known Mr. Compton for many, many years. Heavy metal. Hey, what can I say? Metallica was a uh, ruler of the bunch back in the day. And uh, since then, it's uh, I've seen uh, Iron Maiden, Testament, COC, Metallica, uh, you name it. I've been to quite a few shows and... Uh, Looking forward to hearing what everybody thinks about these guys. Jeff is very modest, but he is an accomplished guitarist himself. Uh, uh, he's, he's very good. Welcome, guys. Thank you for, first off, thank you for taking the time to sit here and talk to me about this album. Thank you for listening to the album and and absorbing it. And, you know, right off the bat, I kind of want to talk about what what your initial impressions were for me the band kind of reminds me of if king diamond had a bastard love child with an amon of mirth i i would say that this band has that kind of interesting style where it, it kind of tells a story but it also thrashes and rocks very very hard and has it has elements of death it has the melodics to it uh, they they like to they like to cross genre, which is very interesting to me because it's it's not often very met with very good success, and um, so it's very interesting how they meld all those into one. So I'm kind of curious how you guys have perceived it when you first heard it. I listen to a lot of European metal, like Nightwish, Camelot, uh, Amon Amarth, um, Aluvite. Like I listen to a lot of different metals, and so when I first the, when I heard first heard Winner. I, I was like, okay, this kind of reminds me of that. Like, they are definitely influenced by their their scene, like their their local scene there. Which, by the way, European metal is awesome. Just period. It's just just yeah. the, it's fun. Yeah. It, it 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 feels it's it, it. I wish metal in in North America was like this that now. I mean, I I mean, that's just my own personal taste. I really I really enjoy it. So I it felt initially when I read, listened to Winter, the very first first one. I kind of got the impression that they, they they were definitely influenced by that. Uh, when I got deeper into the album, when I got to around Vader, I was like, oh, when they, I got to see their full range, I, I gave them I gave them a lot of props because um, they they showed a lot of range. They uh, they reminded me of they, they they became more and more their own sound when you, as you got deeper into it. it's like winners like okay this is this is when you go to a concert this is what they probably would open with it's 
really really solid song but when you get into but when you get into like they, they they really played around with everything and to their credit it works i found this band very visual you know like um very much like you could see them on a stage doing a big show like that mm -hmm. yeah uh, what, what did you think Joe? The mosh pit. <laughs> yeah right <laughs> i think that these guys are uh definitely um all over the grid as far as uh, influences go. I hear so much going on in there, but they blend it very well. I mean, they, they really have uh, a knack for threading things um, through uh, cohesively. Like, I, I mean, I hear, I hear uh, I, I'm a huge Minimarth fan. Um, I have been since the Crusher. And uh, I hear, I definitely hear a Nordic influence in there. I hear uh, bits of Cradle of Filth. And it's funny you touched on King Diamond, Joe, because, I mean, that, that one vocal style he does, the guy's range is ridiculous. I mean, as far as uh, what his vocal capabilities are. And they, they do. Like uh, Josh said, you know, you go through, you know, the first song, it would be like a crowd pleaser almost, you know, something very, um, very meat and potatoes, uh, but tastefully done, uh, but very punchy, you know. And then you start to develop a sense of who these guys are through the Dunwich uh uh, trilogy that they have mm -hmm. on the record, which is amazing. Um, they're they're talented, very talented musicians, and I I think that it's it's a different approach because they're hitting on on five or six different things at once and making it happen with a Latin flair. They just incorporate all these. I mean, I it, it's almost you know um, at first it, the barrage of of influence is like whoa, but you you know over the course of the album you split. And you delve into each one, and you're like, it, it just, it, it actually all makes sense. They, they really are, are uh, pretty amazing at threading this thing together. So I, I, I dug the record, man. I loved it. Yeah, I think uh, especially on winter, you kind of at the very beginning, you almost get this sepultura kind of yeah. vocal, this growly yeah. deep sepultura <laughs> kind of with, right. <laughs> with, with that with that Spanish twang. You know, it's got that kind of that yeah. that, and that's the only time though. After that, it's just like it's almost like. He was like clearing his throat for that song and then moving. And then he just got deeper and deeper and higher and higher as this register, you know, as this, as the album goes on. And I, I would almost guarantee they didn't record it in that order. So right. that's pretty fascinating yeah. that that's the, how it happens like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting that you brought up Sepultura up because I was thinking a lot of the same, same thing when we got to heresy and, and when I was listening to arrival, um, mm -hmm not only Sepultura, but uh, King Diamond as well. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't heard anything. I hadn't been listening to King Diamond since the 90s. So that took me way back into my memory. Now, everybody's been touching on winter, but, and, you know, Josh even mentioned Vader. As far as I'm concerned, the horror and heresy were two of my favorites off the whole right. album. Um, mm -hmm. They were, they were out there and, you know, even the, even the madness at the very end of it. And I mean, all of them, if I had a five star rating for all of them, I'd give them four or five stars all the way across. I mean, they were just that well done. Yeah. Well, everybody's kind of mentioning the obvious stuff and uh, Amon Amarth and Camelot and what was it? Sepultura. Yeah, definitely winter. He had that growl going on and I didn't hear it on any of the other songs. So um, I'm trying to remember the name of the song that reminded me of symphony X. I think it was the horror. Horror. Was, yeah. That's the one I was thinking. It just, I don't know. I used to listen to a band called Symphony X. Don't know if anybody else ever did this back in the nineties. They had like a, a couple of songs that were uh, epic, you know, eight minute songs and they were, you know, sequel to one another and that kind of stuff. And it just reminded me of that song in flames. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of that. Uh, I, yeah. Good, good, good in flames. Not, not, not terrible in flames and flames. Is right. like, <laughs> well, they've been around for so long. They have like 19 albums out and they've changed their sound so much. Yeah. So, you know, I've heard all the influences in there and I agree with what, what everybody's been saying. They got this, uh, they, they just blend everything into their own 
it's like it just after a while you're like okay i can't really compare this to anybody else now what yeah. i think is what i think is cool what i'm discovering here is that we all have a different favorite song too which is the sign of a really good band you know right. when when you can when you can go across the board at a, a nine track album like this and pick out one song you really like but it's not the same as the other person but you that but you also like the other songs that everybody's bringing up that to me is a cohesive album. I don't know how everybody else feels about that, but I agree. I agree with that hundred percent. I think that's, uh, that's what makes an album fun. You know, you, you don't want to sit and have a chore to go through nine tracks. If you're at three and you know, you're looking at the playlist going, man, I got six more to go. You know, <laughs> it can be difficult. You know what I mean? But these guys, um, they just, they keep it fun. They keep it interesting. You know, it's a very bouncy, very lively record. And I, I actually do know who Symphony X is. Um, I, I'm a very big fan of that band as well. And uh, I, I think that you can hear a lot. Of that that would be a power metal um, influence. My good friends in Attacker are power metal in that in that field too. And it, it is very uh, odd because it, you're, you're coming out of something eclectic like a Sepultura uh, dive. You know, they're going down and getting dirty with it. And all of a sudden... You got this power riff, you know, power metal riff just screamed across the, you know, and it's like, whoa. <laughs> but they they do this almost effortlessly, you know. There there yeah. are bands that try to do this, and you either in the, in in that instance, you either are doing it or you are not doing it. <laughs> you know I mean? Somebody has a good ear, and when they're tinkering around with this stuff, I know because I I sit here with a guitar for three four hours a day, and I will play the same. I will just record one bass, you know, rhythm guitar track. And then I will sit there and tinker with it and add stuff to it with another track. And that's just the sign of a good ear. Whoever was doing this, all of a sudden you just add this screaming power riff in there and, and it fits. And somebody went, Hey, that's, that's pretty good. Let's leave that in there. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I think, the, I think the one comment we can make about this band is they were definitely not afraid to experiment at all. I mean, it doesn't matter what, mm -hmm. what, track that you look at i like vader but done which was a good example of this they went you know what let's just try this it did like what well i mean what's the worst that can happen and you got to admire that because even if they even if they had swung and missed and i'm not saying they did at any point i mean you've got to admire someone going out there and just going outside your comfort zone it's like let's let's see what happens when we go here not a lot of bands, I mean, especially in one album, experiment with everything they did. <laughs> I mean, I, I, that's the thing that, that really got me. I, um, with this one. Um, I, I, the other interesting thing, I don't know, Joe's been pointing this out. We all agree about the first song. Winter is almost like their warm up yeah. album so, song. It's yeah. like, okay, guys, yeah. we got you in. Now let's, now let's jump. Right. And that's, and that's pretty much what right. they did for the rest of the album. And it was like, admire that they, they went and they tried something i'm really curious what their next album is going to be actually it's like where did he go from here <laughs> A band tries like a, a concept mid album like you'll you'll have um you know for example just just a, this is a really crappy example but to live is to die into dire's eve uh you know it's it's almost a conceptual concept that it, it blends one song to go into the next mm -hmm. uh, you know and that's the only time in that in that album that the metallica did that i mean they try they tried to hook mm -hmm. everything together but you know uh, th their lack of bass on that album really hurt a lot of what they tried to do. But that's you know that's very true, Joe. And it's been, it's been said many times by Jason Newstead that he couldn't stand working with um, James <laughs> Hetfield because of the lack of bass lines. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> but that but that little part is is Dunwich in a whole because Dunwich yeah. you can't make Dunwich one song. It's eleven minutes long. The 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 trilogy Perfect. and it. And it and it goes, but it changes tone mid midstream in the second song, and then goes back and kind of recalls the first track in the third track, which is kind of just this interesting thing that they did to kind of make it all blend together. 
and and they and so to me i think i would love to see this band try a concept album because i think mm-hmm. it would be it would be probably king diamond-esque in that respect but but or even nightwish-esque you know, yeah, yeah that too but that is just so amazing that they in the middle it, this is like right in the middle of an album where they have these two powerful songs right in the front and then they have a five four four songs after the dunwich trilogy that they just rip a rip through as well and it's just kind of like yeah. that's a weird weird transition but it worked so amazingly well i'll say that the producer on it whoever this person may be or people may be they definitely grabbed all the best parts of these songs and melded them together in the studio to where it worked really well for all nine tracks i mean you don't get left hanging with uh, a crappy song in there at all where you're like oh this is boring and skip you know right. skip so yeah. you know i do that with top artists now they'll put out five six good good tracks on a new cd or whatever buy cds anymore and they have one or two songs in there that you could tell are just filler music oh we needed 10 tracks to make the album so we're gonna throw some crap in there that we threw together but because our names you know whatever people will buy it it doesn't matter if it gets radio play it doesn't matter if our fans love it they're gonna love that one song and that's all that matters so you know, and th- I, their, their producer did a fantastic job of putting this together, making sure that all the best tracks were added. Yeah, it's like Jeff Jeff mentioned the, the ear. Somebody had an ear for this and, and right. really, really made it, made it, you know, cohesive in that respect. And finessing the parts. Like, you know, uh, I really, I think he, he was paying attention to the dynamics of the song very well. Exactly. You know, and really, really working them um, and pulling it out. I, you know, it's very rare that you get a record uh, that, like you said, you know, nine tracks. I mean, there's no fluff. There's no filler. There's no crap. There's no, you know, no MSG, no monosodium gluten. These guys, guys are hungry. Covered. They want to make a name. Yeah. So yeah. they're putting their best stuff out first. You know, what? once they become as big as, you know, uh, I, I, well, I mean, if they ever get as big as Metallica, I know I keep going back to them. No, actually, I haven't bought the last four at Metallica. <laughs> Me neither. But if they get that big, then they may. Yeah, they put, can have their Unforgiven too, you know. <laughs> well, yeah, there you go. What they're saying in, in the music industry, in the in the publishing industry, in the movie making industry, television series industry, you have to be hungry. If you're yeah. not hungry, you're going to fall to the wayside. People will forget you. True, very true. But in that in that respect, Ed, I love that you said that. In that respect, though, uh, there is a way to be hungry and and still have the musicianship behind it. I mean, this this is a clean album from everything I could hear. I, I would be curious to hear from Joe and Jeff's perspective, who have actually recorded stuff. I, I mean, not to not to slight you, Ed or or Josh. I'm sure you guys have a good ear as well. But uh, from the musicianship standpoint, because that's where a lot of indie bands fail, right? You can hear that, like you can hear a hiss or you can hear something that really makes it really grodgy and, 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 you know, doesn't make it, it makes it almost demo ish. It doesn't make it like a true album. And that I didn't hear that with this album, which, which you know, this oh, is no. the third album. I, I did listen to the second one. I haven't listened to the first one, but I'm gathering the first one probably has a lot of that on it, but so the th- you would think by a third album you would learn something. Throw something in on on what you're saying there, just real quick. Just as an aside, it's not really a huge thing. It's just something I've noticed with some albums, like even professional ones. Um, I love it actually when some errors are deliberately left in the album. It feels more natural. There's um one of my favorite bands to listen to is a band called Finger Eleven. Their third album is really good. It's their self titled one. You can literally hear in one particular song where he busts his lip open. You can actually hear it because you just had just how he sings that thing. They left it in there on purpose because it felt actually more natural and, orga- and organic. Um, I, I think uh, I think in terms of polish and in, in ter- like in terms of this one, this one's a very polished album. You can hear it, but it, it feels also for metal, like oddly natural. I'm probably the wrong person you should say, like leave stuff in because I do. I, I will leave in like where I touch the strings on a guitar and I'm doing a master yeah. track recording. I seriously, I will. It, number one, it gives me a cue when I go back over it again and put drums and, and add anything else. But number two, it's like I can remember uh, there was a live album back in the 80s where, you know, people, they were interacting with the audience. And then it was a, 
it was anthrax and joey anthrax, yeah. and joey fucked up joey joey fucked, fucked hey up. joey fucked up yeah <laughs> and, you know, and it's like when i record stuff Watch and i beat. and i'll hear i'll hear where my finger did something i didn't want it to do or uh, you know even the bad nuances those i'll get rid of because they're obviously going to be you know like a you know miss note or something but Every now and then you can tell a guitarist like an Eddie Van Halen or uh, Kurt uh, Hammett or, uh, you know, whoever, just by those little things they do with their fingers. And I'll leave that in my song because you can hear a slide down, a slide up or into this or into that or just the way they accentuate a note to hit to another note, stuff like that. And, yeah, you can hear the guitar player in this and uh, oh, yeah. and more, yeah. just do all these awesome little things. And you just like, dude, you can recognize this guitar player in, you know, 15 years when they make a name for themselves just by the little things he's doing. And, it, and it, you know, as somebody who attends a lot of shows, a lot of multi multi band shows, like I, I've been to every, I went to every Ozfest, I went to every mayhem festival. Uh, and um, I, you know, I'm, I constantly am craving those kinds of shows where you get an all day experience. Uh, there's always one band that always comes up that you didn't hear of that comes on stage and just rips it apart. Even if you're the only one enjoying it, uh, which is never the case with these, with the, with these festivals. But if you're, uh, there's always one band that stands out and that's the band that I gravitated to and I, I'll seek out. And Amon am Earth was that band for me a few years yeah. ago. They were the opening act for the main stage, at, 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 and they came out and they had the big Viking ship, and they walked out, and it was it was it was great. It was just the, the experience, and it was just so pristine, and and the way that they came out, and and I'm every time I listen to this album, I'm thinking to myself, this is the band I would have discovered at Ozfest. This is the band I would have discovered at Mayhem because I can imagine that you know as clean and pristine as the sound, this is them. This is how they've perfected their sound, and they've and they've been able, they know themselves so well, and just it would be so interesting to hear live how they change their I, tone like they do in these albums. Yeah, you know, I, I, and I think that's, I, that's what I keep going back to. Like, I think the worst thing, I think the worst nightmare a band has is that they completely make an album they can't actually play. I think work has that that aesthetic too. Yeah. I think that that they could play everything that they've put out here, and I. I think it would be interesting to see them play this as a concept where they go from beginning to end and see how, how the yeah. crowd responds. Because like you said, Josh, I think winter is the perfect opening song to get everybody amped and then just go. Absolutely. There's no slowing down in this, in this set at all. In, in my opinion, looking at it, I just think it's, you got a band like Gojira or, um, you know, in flames, where they have these these insets where they slow it down on purpose to right. kind of give you a break. This band reminds me of like a like a monomer or or Ramones or an Iced Earth even where they just go. Say iced Earth. Yeah, they, go. Say iced and they, and they don't they don't stop until they're done. You know. Right. right. And I was always under the firm belief that if you can't play it live, you don't play it at all. You know. What I mean, right. don't don't bring it to a you know a studio if you can't bring it to a stage. Because that's where people, I mean, at least that's where our generation and, and you know, gener other generations came up uh, wanting to see it. You're, you know, of course, you, you buy the album and it's great. You can plug it in the car and do whatever, listen to it at home. But when you get in that live element and, you know, I don't think it always has to be perfect on stage either. Just, you know, I mean, you're imbibing your song live and you're getting it out there. But if you're, you know, you step off a hair to do a little embellishment or something like that, it's live. It's perfect. But that, to me, that's part of the live element. It, it, it doesn't have to be. It, it doesn't have to be pitch perfect because it's, it's not going to be. It doesn't have to be. Correct. But it, but you have to show you're in command of that song. That being said, I don't think would anybody here not think that Warwick would deliver. In the last I, I think they I, I think I think it'd be really fun. I I'm actually curious to listen to some of their older stuff because how would they merge like that trilogy with with like would they, would they just do this trilogy with their older music? Would they do the majority of this album with a couple songs from their previous? I would be very curious to see what they actually would do with their concert experience. Yeah, I agree with that too. Well, they do Absolutely. tour, but it's probably going to be mainly in Spain, Barcelona, Spain, places Jordan, like that, yeah. maybe San. Spain, San Jose, Valencia, places like that is probably where they go. I think they are moving it around in in, uh, in Spain quite a bit. And I'm telling you, if those guys come through the States and do, you know, some dates in the States here, 
they're going to move, man. It's it, to me, it's not about marketing, but it's marketable. You know what I mean? It's definitely mm-hmm. they definitely have uh, their own sound, their own thing, and they're they're definitely onto something um, pretty cool, man. I, I'm digging it. I like these guys. I and I, uh, Josh, I also went back and listened to the other two records. And I thought they were great, man. I mean, you can see yeah. the build. You can actually see how these guys are ramping up. Does you anybody know? know who Ola England is? That rings a bell. The Haunted place. and... The Haunted, yeah. That's right. With the yeah. Viola Brothers, yes. I now, know he uh, has his own brand of guitars called Solar Guitars. And that is what uh, our boys in Warwick are using. Wow, no shit. Nice. Yep. That's just, not just to that's throw that's it out there from the yeah you got a guitarist in the group so I had to figure that one out. <laughs> no, no I had to figure out what they were using. That's cool, uh, man. I, I, I play like, drums, so we don't we don't know too much about strings. And if I and if I sang, you guys would give me money to stop. You say, please stop. Here's your money. <laughs> Never do it again. Oh hey, I'm right <laughs> there with you. I am not a singer yeah. at all. But um, I, actually, this is what I was gonna say though. Like music and like music and literature do have one thing in common today. Yet there are niche markets for everything now, and the fact of the matter is, um, like the big like popular the popular market as we know it, the traditionally popular market is kind of dead. I mean, just because of just digital streaming, the way the industry had built and never caught up. It doesn't exist like it like it did anymore. You, you can you can drop something on Spotify. You can drop something on some on other platforms. And if you have a big enough audience, um, you can do very very well just on that alone. Um, I, and I feel that like like especially like there's there is a what I like when we talk we talk on Mom Marv, We can talk Amorphous. We can talk a lot of the bands over there. I'm sure they would not mind being in the pop market. It's good money and all that stuff. But they're doing their thing. And I think and I think. Um, when I look at war, it's like that's where they want to be. Like they have their niche. Like we're, we we we're carving our own little niche for ourselves. We're gonna do. This is who we are. This is what we're gonna do. And if you like us, just keep keep listening because this is what you're gonna get each and every time. And that that will sell. Like you you may not be the you may not be the big name, but you know what? You don't need to be the big name. Uh, no, you got YouTube you. sensations are out there now. Right? Yeah, yeah. You got that, that, yeah. That's my point, right? You have all kinds of uh, kinds of niches now. So the one beautiful thing about it today is, I mean, it's like me. If I'm 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 have a novel I'm working on for, I want to try to get into the big five agency. But I also have an independent book series where I can be as creative as I want. That book series is going to go its own little direction, and I don't really care. It's, if it makes it big, it makes it big. It doesn't, it doesn't. And same with and same with bands like bands say it's like you know what this is this is my niche it's and it's all good to me and and that and I mean in that one sense um, it's a great time to be an artist in any anything you're doing because your accessibility to get content out there is phenomenal today. Oh yeah, there's so many different avenues. I mean, you got platforms all over the grid. I mean, it, these these guys in more have uh, a lot of avenues to pursue here in the states and i'm praying that they do man because i'm telling you that's going to catch fire these guys are definitely on to something and you know uh josh i'll be honest with you they're like you said about if you wrote your own series of books right you're writing you're, you're writing for your head at that point and you know you're just you're saying hey this is what i'm doing and check it out if you like it Check it out some more and get some get some more over here at this medium and in that medium and that medium. If you don't like it, move on to something else. These guys exactly. are writing for their heads. These guys are writing music from their heart and their head. You know, they're not writing to conform to the masses. They're not writing to become the next big popular thing. They're writing out of their own heart and head, and they're collectively doing it in such a fashion that it's going to catch. So that's when you show from the heart <laughs> in music. And my my uh, past uh, with music and uh, just being around it forever and ever, when you show from the heart, people pick up on it like that, man. And it, it's it's like wildfire. And uh, these guys, if they if they get to uh, the bigger mediums, you know, like the Spotify's and things like that, here they're really going to take off. And I hope they do, man, because they are awesome. Joe, thank you for turning me on to these guys. Yeah. Well, actually, Ed turned you on to him. I didn't know you before, Ed, but yeah. <laughs> I deserve. <laughs> but, oh. 
But, but I'll take credit for turning Ed on to it. Uh, <laughs> credit given, man. Credit given. <laughs> but uh, just to wrap it up, guys, and uh, to talk about, if you were to describe this band to somebody uh, who's never heard them, how would you present it to them? Or how have you – maybe you have already presented it to a bunch of people. Uh, how would you guys present it to them? Uh, I want each of you to answer this question. So uh, let's go. let's go with Joe first, and then we'll go down the line. Uh, uh, I would I would describe these guys as a rocket ride through different genres of metal that you're not going to get probably anywhere else. Uh, these guys are fucking amazing. They're just a ball of energy, and they're all over the grid. So if you're a fan of power metal, if you're a fan of thrash metal, if you're a fan of death metal, if you're a fan of metal in period, metal, 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 you're going to love these dudes because they, they got it all rammed up into this one package that works perfectly. They're awesome. He stole my thunder, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy you coffee. See, I'll get you you brought coffee. him in here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, what, I told my, what I told people that I talked to about them, like Ashley Warhol, who's the lead singer, songwriter at uh, for Warhol, um, and what I told Joe and what I told Stevie, because, but I didn't know Stevie didn't listen to him. And... Um, uh, what I told my brother and my son, who listen to a lot of the harder metal, they listen to harder stuff than I do most of the time. Um, like I told you guys before we started, this my brother is one of the best guitarists I've ever heard play, and I'm not just saying that because he's my brother, it's because it's the fucking truth. Uh, what I did was I said, dude, you you know he does a lot of clutch, he listens to a, he does a lot of that thrashier, harder death metal, you know, thrill a minute type of music when he's practicing and playing live and I, I what i told them was if you want to hear a band that has their sound right this is it you really need to check these guys out here's the link look at it listen to it tell me what you think and apparently joe went and looked at it my brother listened to it yesterday he said wow these guys are pretty good and um, I told him, I said, they're from Spain. He goes, that's fucking awesome. So <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, to me, that they are, they, have, they are a European metal band with ranges from Amorphous, Monomarf to Nightwish, and with a Spanish twist. That would be how I would describe it in a sentence. You know what? I would say if you want a magazine write-up on what these guys are about, Go see Joe more. Now, you if go. you if you just <laughs> if I'm just talking to my friend, you know, I can't. I mean, I could sit there and do like a write up on that, and you know, epic, and give him the you know old metal fucking two fingers up and the tongue out and all that. But my friends, the metalhead friends that I have out here, and, and I'm in fucking Iowa, so I mean, we got metal people coming out of the basements all over. We got bands all over the place, uh, ranging from Jim Jones and their startup line is, you know, Drink the Kool-Aid, to a band called Saul that just got their break uh, on live radio, and they're all over the place. So when you talk metal in Iowa, you're kind of like, nah, I just tell people, uh, hey, you you like metal, obviously, you, you can tell another heavy metal head uh, person, and uh, I would just tell them to go listen to it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't ramp it up in any way whatsoever. Hey, you heard this band Warg? No, I haven't heard them before. Check them out. They're from Spain. You know, see what you think. That's all I would do just from, you know, my perspective out here. And, and, you know, it's kind of like, it's like going to an Ozfest show and trying to promote a band. I just wouldn't do it. I would just say, Hey, you like metal? Yes. Here it is. Go listen to this and see what you think. Well guys, thank you so much for taking the time to sit here and talk to me. Uh, I knew this was going to be a nice, lively conversation. You guys are awesome. Thank you for uh, uh, listening to the band, and I'm glad that we're we've got four new fans here. I, I would just, I'm just going to go ahead and assume that, and <laughs> and say that you know um, uh, that's that's the whole purpose of why we do what we do here, and and, and for this show especially. So uh, I'm really happy to hear that, and uh, the you guys. We're awesome. Thank you so much for describing everything that that uh, I was feeling because I was feeling exactly the way you guys were feeling about it, and it it it, it, it was great to hear all that. And it's a uh, it's a wonderful thing to have a band that is kind of changing things a little bit, doing something a little bit different, and yet still have that sound that you recognize. And that's how I would describe work. I I, I think they're. 
They're a band you could point your finger to many influences and different influences as we all have here today. And you can also say that they have certain uh, tones to them and things that, that will remind you of other things. And as we've done that several times today as well. But ultimately, the cool thing about work that I think differentiates them from anything that I've heard recently, especially, is that they're developing their own niche. They are becoming a niche in their own, and they're they're doing something different. And it's it's because of the style, because of the respect they have for the genre that they're playing and the style that they they've come to honed and 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 created. And they found a way to merge all of their likes into one thing, and that is an awesome way to do it. That's an indie band for you. With that being said, it's always time to go indie now. Bring in my heart, everything is winter.